Hello everyone, Madeleine speaking and I made my story system with quests, objectives, dialogues and multiple storylines into a free Unreal Engine plugin. I wanted to post it online in Marketplace, but it's not finished, it's still in tests, so obviously Marketplace will not allow it to be posted. Besides, they don't allow free plugins anyway, so I will just share a link to the files uh, with you and you can feel free to just grab it, test it and let me know what you think. If you decide to work with this plugin in your game, please consider adding me to credits. It will be just nice. But other than that, just, you know, have fun. Uh, it is so buggy that I doubt that you will choose this plugin to <laughs> work with your game. But, you know, you are a free person. You can do whatever you want. The video ahead of us will be very long and boring. And if I wanted to be very detailed, it would be even longer. But... It has to be like this if I want to present the plugin to you. However, if you're not interested in like super detailed technical information about the plugin and you just want to have fun, I invite you to watch this video instead because it's just a general overview and it's at least funny, not boring. First of all, I will go through a presentation that I prepared for you uh, to make going through this topic easier, but it will still be very long and I decided not to go through all of the elements in this video because this would be like two hours long video. So instead, I share this presentation that you see right now on the screen in the description and you can go through it in your own time. And if you have any questions, please let me know in comments or on my Instagram and I will help you. Besides, I am still developing this plugin, so it will be only better. I will fix all of the bugs. I will update the placeholder codes. It will be better in the future, I promise. But for now, it is how it is and I just want to share it with you. This video is more of the plugin presentation than a tutorial and as you can see on the screen you can contact me in case of any problems. The thing that you should know about this uh, plugin though is that it's heavily based on tutorials, obviously. Uh, this is part of the reason why I don't want to charge you for this because you could basically develop something similar based on the tutorials that I used, potentially, <laughs> if you had similar needs. And the godfather of the system is Rights Channel Quest System, which I heavily, heavily recommend you to watch. Okay, so what types of games this system is made for? Well, the kind of games that are similar to mine. So basically open-ish world games that just have to have a story. The system was primarily developed for my detective game that happens in a small European-like city. It's not a puzzle game that unlocks some hidden rooms if you give the right answer. Instead, you are given leads that you follow and within those leads you might need to figure out something by talking to people or gather evidence and yes, you could potentially also have some puzzles inside but they would be in a form of a quest with a, for example, compass marker. In my game, I have one main line which goes straight from case start to case solution and if someone would follow this main line, the story would be very linear. That is why I have reroute lines that basically make a player to follow the false leads. The player, however, doesn't know which leads are false and which are correct, so it is possible in my game to fool a player a little bit and simulate non-linearity. Additionally, I plan to add side quests unrelated to story and casual talks with NPCs unrelated to any quests and also mini games in a form of objective. The plugin comes with a basic version for journal, detective board, compass and tracking quests on a compass. So it allows you to just let your quest designer, narrative designer to put the story inside the uh, story BP instead of hard coding it. Before you use the, the plugin, well, first of all, just download the data, scan for viruses, never download the things from internet without scanning for viruses and put it into your plugin folder. It will work if you make sure that you uh, use inputs for keyboard and mouse, like in third person or third person perspective game. And you can also just import the settings that I provided in this localization here and most importantly you make sure that game instance is gi main and the game mode is example story system mode or at least that your files contain the code of those elements but you would have to basically rewrite the whole the whole system because for now uh, the system is not very flexible and you cannot just you know <laughs> change the player pawn uh, and expect that everything will work fine because it's you know it's still beta I, I, I still test it and a lot of things is set in stone unfortunately like game instance and game mode. You would have to rewrite the system a little bit to allow yourself to use different modes and instances. Okay, so let's go through the example story outline that you will see 
on a map in a second. I will go through the actual game and story with you in just a second because I will present it, how the game looks like. But before we go through the game, I would like to show you what the story is, what the storylines are. So the story starts very simple. It's even the first quest is even called Start Simple. And it's just a se sequence that is triggered automatically on game start on objective activation. It basically means that it's also, it's also silent, so it will not be visible in journal. It is just a cutscene, basically, because in my solution, I use objectives not only as a story objectives, but also as a way to trigger certain actions in my game, like cutscenes, for example, or like mini games. When the sequence finishes, then the objective starts and it's called turn on light. It's like the most basic objective and it just turns on light, da da. When you do that, the next quest of a main storyline starts, it's talk to Eliza, and you basically go through this dialogue. In a second, you will see what the dialogues look like. It basically introduces you to the whole dialogue system, and it even talks a little bit about how the system works. But what you need to know for now is that this quest is actually holding a story action inside, which means that whenever this quest finishes, so whenever this dialogue finishes, it activates a reroute line. So it's a second story blueprint actor that you place on the map because everything is a story blueprint actors placed on a map. This reroute is forcing you to talk to Carmen and actually it even pauses the main story. So you will not be able to go through the main story until you talk to Carmen, which is very cool. When you do that, you are allowed to go through the main story uh, because the Reach Yellow Area objective within Let's Walk quest contains actually quest start condition. And this condition says, don't activate me until the player talks to Carmen. So yeah, if we talk to Carmen, we are allowed to activate this Reach Yellow Area objective uh, within quest Let's Walk. At the same time, the side line activates the next quest, which is Collect Yellow Boxes, and it is Collect Yellow Boxes objective as well. And it contains Collect Yellow Boxes objective inside. In, order, in order to collect anything and force a player to collect anything, you need to use a Collect Item objective type. And this item accepts Pickable Item Blueprint actor that you placed on a map. With this quest, you are actually allowed to collect those yellow boxes before the quest even starts, which is very cool because if you collect all of the boxes before the quest starts, this quest will be automatically completed. At the same time, you do not even have to collect those yellow boxes because this quest is not related to the main story anymore which basically means that from now on you can finish a mainline and you do not need to worry about the side quest because it will not block anything. The rich yellow area, however, has another story action and it's activate reroute 2. So we have three main storylines in this example story. The second storyline starts with a quest, collect the blue boxes which at the same time has a objective of the same name. Uh, and with this quest, you are not allowed to collect blue boxes before this quest. So those blue boxes are activated for you only at the time of this objective, not earlier, not later. At the same time, this quest is not connected to the main storyline. Hence, you do not have to finish this quest to finish the whole game. Simultaneously, while this quest is activated, the main story quest, so Violet quest, is activated as well. And it's called Let's Walk Around. In this quest, the order is not required. You can reach the purple area and violet area in whatever order you want. It's not important. But when you reach both of them, the quest will get completed. And then the last quest comes, which is basically trigger sequence. Unlike the first sequence that we, that we see at the very beginning, this one is not triggered automatically on objective activation which means that player actually has to reach some kind of area in order to activate it. And this last quest triggers the sequence only if the player reaches the area that is marked on a compass. And that's it when it comes to the story. Let's now go through the game itself and the system in real life, uh, away of this presentation. But just for you to know, this presentation is very long. As you can see, you can go through it like I am just skipping through everything right now. I am describing here everything. Everything that I will talk about in a second is in this presentation. So basically you can go through it on your own. The link is in the description and you can learn about everything that you need to know about every objective type, about the requirements that every objective has, about the related 
actors ab related blueprints and day requirements, also about story actions and quest conditions. And last but not least, uh, you will also learn how to create dialogue scripts, which I will talk about in a second as well. And you will learn how to create new objectives customized to your needs, because you know you might need more than, that, than those objectives that I just spoke about. So. I went through the presentation just very quickly because I don't want this video to be one and a half hour long, which it would be if I wanted to go through it in the highest possible detail. But if you want me to go through it and if you want me to create a tutorial for how to create such a system, just let me know, okay? Because I honestly don't know what is the interest about this plugin. Maybe no one will use it and then creating one and a half hour video just doesn't make sense, right? Let's skip to the Unreal Engine in that case. I will go through the system in Unreal Engine 4, mostly because I work on Unreal Engine 4 and I feel more comfortable in this editor. But if you know how to work with Unreal Engine 5, it all works exactly the same way. So feel free to use it in whatever editor you want. Okay, so let's go super quickly through the system setup. As mentioned before, I am working on Unreal Engine 4, but the system works also on Unreal Engine 5, so feel free to use it there if, if you prefer it. Mm, the system is very big and complex, so I will not go into too much detail. I will just show you how to set up your story if you wish to test it yourself. And if you just skipped right through the presentation and omitted the slides that I showed previously, just keep in mind that the system is still under test, it's not finished, and I am still working on bug fixing and filling in the placeholder code. So what do we have here? The scene starts, like you see here, the camera is set directly at the hints that you might need at the very beginning. It's everything that we already spoke about. There are some instructions on how to use uh, the journal and the system itself. What are the keyboard inputs that are accepted? what is the game mode and what is the game instance required. You can also see a few colorful fields here that are used for the system. The pickable items that you can see here, they are either yellow or blue boxes. And of course our NPCs, which is Eliza and Carmen. Those are our heroes. To set up a system like this, if you want to set up your system, you can Get inspired by, by this example map that is ob obviously provided with the plugin uh, under the story system related folder. You have everything grouped out and categorized. You have all pickable items, actors in one folder or NPCs in the other and so on and so forth. What is the most important at this point of the video is that you need separate story BP actor placed on a map and every story BP aligns with certain story line. So like we saw previously, we had three story lines. One is main line, which is a story BP, this one, and it's story BP actor blueprint, which you can, by the way, find under story system story. And you have here all of the parent classes for story and quests. Well, all three <laughs> of them. Uh, so this is the violet one from the presentation that we saw be before. This is the orange one from the presentation we saw before, which is as well side story blueprint. So it's a separate class. It's a child class of a story BP. And the last but not least, blue storyline from the presentation we saw before, which is reroute story 2, which is side story blueprint. Every story BP is set in the same way, so there is no differences from the user perspective. There is just slightly different code running in the background in order to understand which, which story is main and which one is root story. So every story VP has a detail tab that you can go into. There is a create story category. I will just make it bigger for you to see it better. And you have story quest objectives, which is, ba which is basically a data table created based on a structure. When adding quests, you just, you know, click a plus button. You, I'm sure you know how to use it. So every quest has certain fields that need to be filled in. I don't want to go into much detail about what every single variable here means, mostly because it is in the presentation I showed before. I didn't talk about it in this video because it would take one and a half hour. I tried it. I recorded the full video with everything explained. It took one and a half hour. <laughs> so I am not overestimating it. But it's mostly self-explanatory, and if it's not, it's in a, in a presentation. So I really recommend you to go through this presentation. 
And obviously you add set objectives, we'll go to the first one because it has a dialogue. You have a story action that you can add. In this case, it's activate reroute like we spoke about uh, previously. And you can add objectives also by plus, like everything that is a array, you just expand, expand with pluses. And if it's a dialogue, you need to just choose the dialogue type, objective name, description, and actors that it needs. So the dialogue, uh, the dialogue system actually needs all the data from dialogue data filled in. So the dialogue data table script, dialogue ID, NPC name, information if the NPC exists on a map right now, it has to exist on a map, it doesn't spawn anything. And NPC object reference, so basically if it's the conversation with Eliza, which is here, you need to find the NPC also named Eliza, it has to be the same name in order to make it work. If you do not choose any data table with script, it automatically chooses quest dialog script CSV. As you can see, everything he here has a tooltip. So even if you don't go through the presentation, you should be able to figure out what everything does. Uh, be very careful with adding story actions and quest conditions and quest actions, because if you do it not very wisely, then you can, you know, just block your system to go further. So uh, I would propose to focus mostly on the story actions and start quest conditions in order to just, you know, let the system figure out what to do. The second quest, let's walk. This is rich yellow area that we spoke about earlier. If you uh, remember, we had a condition there that paused the main line until we spoke to Carmen. This is Carmen. Hello, Carmen. And this is the, con the, the condition that pauses the main line. So this is quest condition, confirm quest is completed and you choose the reroute story one. <laughs> so this is the, the, this conversation is from reroute story and it waits for the related quest ID. This is the ID. This is the quest ID zero to finish before activating the main story line, which is cool. If you need more information about what all of those variables mean, please refer to the presentation or ask me questions in comments or on Instagram. I prefer Instagram, to be honest, if you have questions about this uh, plugin, mostly because it's just easier to have a conversation there. But if you want your question to be visible for everyone, you know, just comment it here. If the interest will be big, which I don't suspect it will be, I will create a Discord channel or whatever. And I will also put the link in the description. Okay, so let's move on to the game itself. Let's click play. It's a start sequence that we spoke about uh, when we saw the slides. It is triggered automatically on start and that is why, you know, nothing happens. It's also silent, so there is a toggle visible. I'll maybe show you this. Uh, story BP, where are you? Okay, if we go to the first quest, so ID zero, and we go into set objectives, we can see that there is a toggle here, it's objective silent, and it basically tells the system to hide it in the journal, so it's not visible there, and I will prove it to you. I clicked J. Let's start simple as a first quest, and there is only turn on light visible, so there is no information about the cutscene, because the objectives in my system act also as a, a way to trigger certain actions in the game, not necessarily add information into journal. M or escape, we can go out of the menu. Uh, as you can see, the camera is set right into the light. Uh, it's a beautiful light that looks like a tab table. I am aware it's not very user friendly, but what you're gonna do, it's, it is how it is. So let's press F. So now we can talk to Eliza, which is basically a main line. First second quest of a main line, we can see it here, yes, we have information, talk to Eliza. Um, by the way, I will maybe go through the menu very quickly, it's inventory board, which we will get into in a second. It's not really inventory because the system was developed for my detective game, so I don't need inventory there, but I have a detective board, so I will have gather all of the items, aka evidences here, and you can move it to this area, the white area visible on the right. For any reason, you can develop your functionalities there. There is no city map, maybe it will be in the future, and play a statistic which look like this right now, then it will change after dialogues. 
Okay, let's go out from the menu. So the main line is talking to Eliza, which, as you might remember, triggers the sideline to talk to Carmen. Sideline, yellow line, uh, at the same time contains the second quest, collect yellow boxes. If you remember from the presentation, we can actually collect those boxes. This is a pickable item actor from the map before the quest starts. And how do we do it? We actually do it by setting the pickable item information. So when we set, when we put the actor on a map, we have the data details visible and available for us. We have a thumbnail that we will see in a inventory name that has to be unique. It uh, if you have the same two names, it will not work fine. And there is the information only in quest, which basically says whether or not you can collect this item outside of quest. If it's true, then you cannot. You can only collect it in quest. Yellow boxes are not only in quest, so you can collect them before quest happens. And if you collect all of them, the quest, well, not quest, objective, sorry for that. I am talking too fast. Uh, the objective will get completed automatically if it realizes that all of the items were collected beforehand. Uh, when it comes to a stackable, a story related and quantity, don't worry about it. It will be maybe developed in the future. For now, it does nothing. <laughs> um, and when it comes to the objective itself, if we go to the reroute line, which contains this objective, this is, this is the second Ob uh, the second quest and the objective is inside the second quest, collect yellow boxes, you have here something like array of actors and like this you just add all of the pickable items that should be collected at this point of the quest. You can also notice here that I have area trigger, look up area chosen, so this is the area that contains all of those yellow boxes. If you choose area trigger, it will turn compass green at the top, we will see it in a second, when we enter this area and then we will not see the markers for the, uh, for the pickable items, but if we not choose the lookup area, then it will, then every pickable item will contain their own marker on a compass. Okay, let's go back to the game. We can now see that we, for example, cannot pick up the blue items because they do not have the important variables set up. Okay, so let's go with this quest finally. <laughs> let's talk to Eliza. I will read through the dialogues. I am so bored with those dialogues already, but I will, you know, read them because there is no uh, audio. And there are some funny voices, which I hope you will not hear when I will be recording this video. But uh, other than that, there is no actually uh, there is no actual voiceover recorded. Okay, so I will be the voiceover and I will also make the commentary, okay? So the dialogue actually explains you everything, explains how the system works. Hello, I am player. My ID in script is always one. It is, by the way, just check the script. I use animation and sounds that you added in the script. And I am NPC and my ID is anything bigger than one. Yeah, camera switches between player and NPC based on camera ID written and script. Yes, that is true. Camera switch is called in BP Dialogue, which is basically a separate blueprint, uh, not related really to the story system. And you can also have choices in dialogues and they influence player statistics. This is what we spoke about earlier. The widget will appear right now and the choice is final. You cannot change it during the game. So whether you, like whatever we choose right now, it will be written to the game instance as a variable and then based on it uh, you can set some conditions in quests in your game based on the choices that you make. However, if you make a choice here, this will not circle back and you will not be allowed to make this choice again, unlike in other games. Bye bye, I'm done talking, will actually decrease our statistics, so we do not want to do that right now. Maybe we will ask Eliza about uh, dialogue line types. We are now in sub dialogue too. Yes, so every choice give, leads you to another sub dialogue, and when this quest ends, the new reroute story will start. Go to dialogue in script, tells which sub dialogue should be chosen. What happens in dialogue and which widget is visible depends on dialogue line type in quests. Dialogue line type is what you see right now. End line type is the last dialogue line. Every sub dialogue, by the way, should have their own end lines, otherwise, it will not work. 
and it stops the dialogue after it, so build your script with caution. Every sub-dialogue should have its own end, it's even in the script, wow, everything is in the script. For example, this dialogue of ID1 has three sub-dialogues, one, two, and three, and it also has three end lines. Choice line type is the most tricky. Every time the screen hip hits a choice, it checks how many choices lines in a row there is. In our case, there were three choices. I will show you that in a second. That is why you had three choices to choose from. You can have maximum four choices in a row and each have to have go to dialogue chosen. By, but this is the end now, go talk to Carmen which is a rude story and it's not visible on the screen because I am fucked up. <laughs> okay, I will just show you the script. It's in dialogues and, 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 and where do you, where are you, where are you? Quest, oh yes, quest dialogue script CSV. So this is the script that we just saw at the first one. I, ID one, yeah, and sub dialogues one, two and three. NPC number, everything what was said in the in the dialogue basically. A player number is always one and NPC is bigger than one. So in this case is two. Um, it doesn't mean that every NPC has to have their own ID in the system. No, it's just the ID of this certain dialogue. So it's second person to talk to. Player is the first person and an NPC is the second person. For now, dialogue is probably not prepared to have more than uh, one NPC in the conversation, but I will expand it obviously. Line type, this is what was spoken about, is dialogue and block of choices. We had three choices, so this is the block of choices and the end line. Yes, and since we had second sub dialogue, we had second end line and third sub dialogue had this third end line. Yes, and all of the lines are here. Every choice has go to dialogue ID uh, which is basically the ID of a sub dialogue. So this choice led us to this sub dialogue and we didn't hear the third sub dialogue. You could choose it uh, if we chose the tell me more about names. Bye bye, I'm done talking. Just gets, gets us back to the first sub dialogue. And this is how it works. Add points to uh, decides which statistics to change and points quantity tells how many points to <coughs> add or subtract. Tell me more about dialogue type. Actually updated the stats three of uh, by two. If we go to menu now and player statistic oh, items, I will talk about it in a second. We can see that they actually improved uh, the second statistics. Uh, yeah, it's not very user friendly. It doesn't say which statistics are which, but this is just a placeholder for your actual system to be built on top of it. When it comes to inventory, we collected two yellow boxes and we can drag them here and do something with them. On the detective board in my game, I can actually, you know, join them with a red line, but the system here doesn't contain this functionality because why would it? Uh, we cannot m take it back here, so, you know. <laughs> this is just a placeholder. As I said, it comes with a basic UI for you to build upon. Okay, let's get back to the system and to the game. So let's talk to Carmen because our system right now is paused. Like this is main story that is paused and this is the reroute story which you cannot differentiate because they look the same. It's actually on purpose. I didn't want to make it different, but you can if you want. This is just a basic UI. Uh, as you can see, it's also very perfect because when you click something, it actually stays gray. I will maybe correct it someday. I don't know, we will see. <laughs> like I, I obviously need it to look better, uh, but mm, it's not my top priority right now. Uh, let's talk to Carmen and let's make a voiceover for her dialogue. Hello, I am player and I've heard this dialogue is not the main storyline. It is not, it really isn't. Indeed, it is a reroute story. However, the main story is on hold now and it waits for our conversation to finish to move forward. Yes, it does. It really does. I've heard you can do stuff like this in here by simply choosing conditions of the quest. You can, I showed you that before. That is true, though the system is still not finished, so if you are not careful, you can mess up the story massively. You can, like it's so prone to errors. If you do anything wrong, it will just die. But Madeleine Stone, which is me, is working her ass off to fix all the bugs and finish it. Right, right now, you can run story actions such as activate reroute and check start and end conditions of the quests. This is how we put main story on hold right now. 
Now the choice come. The first one of this dialogue as you can have multiple choice blocks in dialogue. You can. I showed you the choice block and the first dialogue and you can have as many choices as you want. Choice blocks. I am bored, bye bye. Again, it will subtract the points of our statistics and uh, we want to like, gather our points plus we want to know more about the system, which is our only option here. Okay, tell me more. We have statistics here. Okay, so you want to know more points, points for you. You can check your stats in menu under M after dialogue. The quest conditions that are already implemented and should work fine are confirm if other quest is completed, confirm if other quest is incompleted. It's, you know, it's the same condition, basically just opposite. <laughs> confirm that given dialogue choice was taken or was not taken. So every choice is written down in game instance, like I mentioned. Also activate reroute story action is implemented. Generally, start conditions are much more tested and work better than end conditions. So keep that in mind. This will be obviously improved. <laughs> like nothing works well in this uh, story system, basically. So to even add actions to con or conditions to quest, you need story BP and side story BP on a map. Then simply add item to story quest objectives and choose whatever you want. So this is what I showed you. You have to have it on a map and then you have the details available. Every action and condition is or will be coded inside quest actions BPFL. And now time for the second choice of this dialogue. What do we want to do? Do you want to add points to my stats or subtract points from my stats? I don't know. I will maybe subtract. <gasps> subtract from the statistic three. No, I just don't remember which one was updated earlier. Okay, I subtracted points. Now you can continue with reroute story and collect yellow boxes or you can go back and to the main story and go to the yellow area. Yeah, so if we go here, we now see we have two quests that are not completed. One is tracked, it's Let's Walk. It's our uh, main story that is tracked automatically on start. This quest didn't start until you spoke to Carmen, even though it's in the main line. This objective will get completed if you reach yellow area. Yeah, you see the descriptions are very useful. Collect yellow boxes. Collect all the yellow boxes that you haven't collected before. There are three in total. So we collected two already, which we can see in the inventory board. And we will maybe complete this main line quest. Yeah, so as you remember, if we go to yellow area, um, it actually activates the second reroute. And with that, we have three quests active because we have collected blue boxes and we can track it because why not? We, can, we have collected yellow boxes. Uh, yeah, and let's walk around, which is the main line. This is the orange line. This is the blue line. Uh, I am referring to the colors that you saw on the presentation before. Okay, if you s can see the marker actually shows up uh, towards the area that contains the blue boxes. If we enter it, it actually turns green. So if we go out, we can see the marker for the area, not every separate uh, item. If we enter it, we need to look for it. So it's very useful if you don't want player to know where the items are hidden. If you enter this area, it will just get green and you have to search for these yellow boxes. And since you're stupid, you will go there <laughs> to look for it. <laughs> but sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I, I am not stupid. So I'll just collect it. It will get completed. Yes, as you can see, the, uh, this is something that I said before. There are some code parts that are just lagging or not perfect. And because of that, for example, Compass Marker can have problem with updates if, the se uh, if two quests use the same area, which is the case for this uh, particular situation. Like two objectives at the same time use the same area and Marker doesn't actually know <laughs> which one to choose. So it chooses nothing. It usually fixes itself when you get into the journal and go out you, you see it's fixed it actually yes it tracks the walk let's walk around rich purple and violet area uh let's complete all of the side uh quests maybe so let's now also collect the blue items because if we don't and if we finish we, we can finish the main storyline without collecting the boxes so let's just finish just you know to see that it can be finished so now we have only one uh, quest active and this is the main line and 
it's not important uh, in which order you go to those areas. And ahead of us is the last quest. The last quest. Wow, oh, that is very creative name. And trigger final sequ trigger final sequence. If you enter the turquoise turquoise area, the game will finish. So this is the second type of the uh, trigger sequence objective. If we go to the main story, the last quest is the last quest. <laughs> and we have objective type, objective trigger sequence. Those are the descriptions. Uh, it's not silent. The objective is not silent, so it will be visible in the journal. And you, as you can see, we have area trigger chosen to turqua and is automatically triggered on activation is false. It means that you need to approach the chosen area, Turk area, uh, in order to trigger the cutscene. This is how this works. If you have it true, it's like the first quest. It just starts automatically. You, you don't have to do anything, it just starts. Uh, if we if we didn't finish, if we wouldn't finish the side quests, uh, it would still finish the game. So the end would be here regardless of the status of the side quests. But we finished everything because we are good children. Ah, about player statistics. Here are player statistics. Uh, when you add points, you know, it gets filled in with those colors. You can imagine it. <laughs> I'm sure you will have fun imagining it. it. Okay, so let's go. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, so that's the system, basically. A lot of errors. That's why also Marketplace wouldn't allow this plugin to <laughs> be on their site. Uh, and that's it. Oh, one more thing. Maybe I will just, uh, before, before we finish, I will just show you one thing. Those dialogues were super long, weren't they? If we, I prepared some special dialogue if we wanted to just go through something and uh, we don't want to hear the whole dialogue all over again, you can go into the quest that contains the dialogue and just change the ID of the dialogue to three. Yeah, and let's do it also in the reroute line and talk to Carmen. Carmen, where are you? And we also let's make it in dialogue data. Let's make it three, three. And now when we play it, the trigger sequence is there like, okay, da, 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 well, that's some cool music could play, but I didn't do it because no, me. Okay, so we have it and now, ah, okay, turn on light. I forgot about it, super. Let's turn on table. <laughs> Sorry, I am losing my mind. Eliza. Blah, 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 bye. Yeah, so this is the way I, I actually test a lot of things here because I didn't want to listen or read through all of the dialogues over and over again. So I just created the dialogue ID 3 because dialogues can have names. Like you can have NPC names in dialogues that do not have to match the NPC actors' names. So yeah. Uh, third dialogue can be used as many times as you want. And so is the other, every other uh, dialogue. You can use every dialogue ha as many times as you want. There is no limitation there. But just, you know, uh, you can create some goofy story and it will just not make sense. But the system allows it. Uh, you are a real person. You have a brain, not a system. You can choose whatever should be done. Yeah, so this. And then you can, you know, test whatever you want to test. This is how this game, this example game works. This is how the example story looks like. Uh, all of the options are basically used here uh, in this short story and you can create whatever you want. You can also add your customized objectives, which I will not go through right now because it will take a lot of time to explain that. Uh, everything is in this presentation that I mentioned multiple times already. This video was super long. Still, it is the shortest possible video I could make about this plugin if I wanted to allow you to work with it. But if you feel like you need more details, like you want me to go through 
customizing the system and creating your own objectives and your own actions and so on and so forth, let me know, I will create it. If you prefer me to create a tutorial of how to create such system, I will well, probably not do it, but <laughs> you can request it. Um, if, a, if a lot of people would like that, I will, prob I will maybe do it. I don't know, I don't feel like a blueprint or programmer guru. I, I really, I am self-taught and I do not know a lot of stuff. I make a lot of mistakes. My system is not perfect. It's optimized as much as I could, but it's still not perfect. So I don't feel like a guru that can tell others how to live their lives and uh, prepare games uh, uh, and, build at, and build up systems. But yeah, I can try if you want to. I doubt that you would, but yeah, if you do, let me know. And I hope to hear from you in the future. I really hope, you know, that drill. don't like, don't subscribe. Well, sorry, actually, I take it back. This time, do like and do subscribe because I spend a lot of time on this system and I am sharing this system for free. I know it's not perfect, but I'm sharing it for free and you can build up on it, you can fix it, or you can just wait for me to fix it and then we can, you know, have fun all together. Uh, but, you know, uh, if you don't like the system, don't subscribe, but if you do like it, just at least uh, leave a thumbs up it would just be nice and remember include me in the credits of your game if you choose to use the system or build on top of it because uh, this would be just nice just so nice and let's be friends let's stay in touch uh, ping me in comment section talk to me on instagram i reply to all of you because uh, there are not many of you <laughs> but uh, even if it will be more i will still do my best to reply to all of you and i really hope we will stay in touch and see each other next time papa -pa!